you can start pulling your hair apart when different pages of your document don't even look like they belong to the same document. Today, I have for you an easy and efficient process that will not only make your life a whole lot simpler, but will also get you a whole lot of praises. Please stay tuned, watch this video till the very end. I have the entire process and workflow laid out step by step. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Daryl and you're watching Go Beyond Design, the only place where you learn all the industry level secrets, strategies, concepts and design secrets that no one is telling you about. Please stay tuned, watch this video till the very end. I have a lot coming for you. I've been teaching and doing graphic design for over a decade now. I'm currently heading the visual communications division in a leading real estate firm. If you're here for the first time, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also hit the bell icon. This will let you know whenever I put out a new video. In the last video, we saw how we can quickly and creatively design single page artworks. And it was a process which had been working for me for several years. I give it out to you. Now it's time for us to look at how we can go ahead and design a document which has multiple pages and multiple artworks and lots and lots of content. It might be inundating at first, but once you get to know how the process works, it's going to be a piece of cake. Starting with the first point, the flow of content. There is a flow of content that starts from the beginning of the document and then flows on till the very end. This is of course something which is already decided by the client or the project manager at an early stage. But if it isn't and it is something that is left to your interpretation, then I would highly suggest go ahead and do your fair bit of research on how you want the information to flow. It could be maybe you're making a project for a new real estate project like we do. And what I really do is that I see where is this project coming at. If, if a project's location is something that is worth talking about. And then I would talk about the local area of the project. And on the third spreadsheet, maybe I would talk about why is that project so good and what is the usp of that project and then i'll go ahead and on another sheet of spread of paper i would go ahead and try to explain why is that specific project so better from its competitors and then i could go ahead and explain different layouts and plans on that project and then i would explain the payment plans and policies and all the other features that the project has and at the end I would put the addresses. So this was a very small example on how you can really design the flow of information by yourself when you don't really have a structured document. But if you do have a structured document and, some, and the client has product provided you with something which is very organized, you can definitely go with that. But just bear in mind, all the information has to start from the beginning to the end in a very systematic and logical manner. Let's move on to the next point. Here we will talk about how we should analyze references. Now, of course, we all know that for everything that we do in design, we need inspiration. And this, my friend, is no different. You will definitely need inspiration in this one as well. So there are a couple of ways how we can pick up inspiration. First, we can look, for example, let's say you are building a sales presenter for a newly launched product. And now you are looking for references. 
now we can take ideas from several references also you can look at sales presenters or brochures from several different companies which may or may not be pertinent to your specific product but that's okay we are just here for design inspiration in this you can pick up specific elements or you can pick up specific text formatting you could also pick up color schemes and elements and layouting from different you can pull them from different different sources and try to make sense of them all in a layout which is which is to be drawn by you and this is one way of doing it the other more simpler way would be to just stick with one great design or layout that you've really shortlisted out of seeing all of these wonderful designs so you've zero down on this one design that you really really like and this is what we've been doing lately we used to do designs we used to pull designs from different sources and then you we used to uh, get them together so that they look homogeneous on a sheet of paper we would do that you would draw it out on a sheet of paper uh, but these days we kind of try to stick with one design that we really like now once you've selected that one design or you've selected several designs which you've got out on a piece of paper at that point of time it was for you to decide what are the kind of elements what are the kind of color schemes the design that you will need to replace in that document so that the document or the sales presenter in this case looks like it belongs to your brand like it belongs to the company that you're designing it for and this is what happens you take something but then you make it uniquely yours you have to infuse these elements these brand elements these uh, brand colors these uh, brand logo elements and all all these things which really will make your design your own so this is how you will do it now let's move on to the next point of color combinations now we need to pick up colors well not too many colors just two or three colors which resonate with the brand that resonates with your audience that resonates with the product line that you're displaying on your catalogs brochures or your sales presenter and that resonates with the kind of artwork that you are doing i'll give you a small example well there was a sales presenter that was being developed and for most people that presenter didn't look very posh didn't look very uh, you know well designed in terms of color and at that point of time somebody just came up to us and said that you know uh, this doesn't look the colors don't look good enough but here is the question i asked that person whom do you think this color is for it's not for us it's not for my subjective opinion it is for the audience it's been built for it is resonating with the brand color it resonates with the product line that we are building this brochure for so now that you understand the idea why do we do use specific colors it is very important for you to pay much attention to it also another thing that i would want to point out is that if you're making a brochure a sales presenter or an ongoing piece of collateral that happens month after month or week after week you will want to have some consistency in the volume of those collaterals say for example there is a brochure volume 1 and there's a brochure volume 2 volume 3 and those are all different products but from the same product line so you would want to stick with the same colors maybe you would want to stick with the same designs but add in a few elements which are unique to the product at every catalog or brochure say for example you're designing for the product line of a beer trimmer now there could be several beer trimmers there in the product line one could start from 500 rupees then it could go on to a good 5000 rupees 
but of course the one which is there at a very low cost will have designs that will appeal to that kind of audience so you could basically keep the same color scheme say for example it's a Philips then colors of white blue and gray would be reflected across all the brochures that you've made but will have accents in different product brochures so that they reflect an identity of the product that they've been designed for at the same time it looks like it's from the same brand family like it's from the same product line that's how you do it but please bear in mind whenever you put accent colors use it very sparingly you don't want accent colors to dominate a design it should just be in a small element it could be at the side of a page it could be in the headings of documents or subheadings of documents it is to be used very sparingly it cannot dominate the entire document because if it does it's going to look like it's from a very different volume of catalogs altogether so please keep that in mind also i would like to point out maintaining consistency in text in text formatting is absolutely essential once you start with a specific size a specific weight and a color in the heading subheading points and text of emphasis that needs to be carried forward in the same way across the document page after page you cannot use a different type of format in the first one and a different type of format in the second or the third one that cannot be done this is one of the very basic foundations of text formatting not just in designing but in formatting a text in any document whatsoever wherever you design it so you need to keep that in mind also consistency needs to be maintained wherever there are tables so the kind of colors the kind of elements the kind of text font sizes and graphic elements that you use are one place that needs to be consistently carried forward page after page spread after spread spread so that it does look like it belongs to the same document similar thing goes on to the infographics and other artworks that will be present in your document so please bear that in mind now if you've liked this video if you think this video was of information of or of value for you i would really like to understand what you think about it please tell me in your comments if you've liked it if there are things that you would wanted me to cover in this things that i might have left out or other things that you would want to know from me okay guys so this is me daryl signing off you were watching go beyond design see you until next time